thank you dr ina thank you very much for the nice introduction and thank you amit rutul and the whole team of psg for inviting me to speak on uh, this case based symposium let me try to share my slides uh, Yeah, are the slides visible? Doctor Hina, are my slides visible? Yes, yes, it's visible. Okay, okay. So uh, we'll start with a, a case. Uh, I have just put up a case, which is a representative case. It's not a real patient, but just wanted uh, to have some discussion on this case. So uh, here is a 32-year-old female who comes to me with uh, 16 weeks of amenorrhea. and was referred for management of gdm by the gynecologist the patient has a history of pcos for which the patient has been taking metformin 500 mg twice a day uh, her family history uh, of diabetes is there in both the parents uh, she is obese the body mass index being 28.7 her blood pressure is normal 124 by 82 hbo1c is 6.7 fasting uh, on the smg chart the fasting is between 116 to 132 and two or post meal is 178 to 212 so uh, now first let us start with the diagnosis so uh, is it a pre existing type 2 or a gdm now as we know that uh, recently the definition of gdm has been revised and now we call uh, a patient as having gdm only if the diabetes is diagnosed in the second or third trimester of pregnancy and that was not clearly overt diabetes prior to gestation so this patient uh, was diagnosed in the second trimester so we can say that uh, she is a gdm but then how can we be sure whether she was having diabetes prior to gestation or not now in this case is sorry is hbo1c of any use if we want to see like you know in normal cases we do hbo1c just to know about the prior glycemic status of the patient in the last 3 months but in pregnancy again the guidelines say that a1c is not a reliable screening tool for gdm or for pre existing diabetes at 15 weeks of gestation or later so these are the guide these are from the ada guidelines so hba1c is not much of use here for us secondly the patient is already taking metformin so if the patient was having pre existing diabetes and she is on metformin metformin would have some effect in lowering the a1c so that is why we cannot be very sure whether the patient had pre existing diabetes type 2 diabetes or she is gdm now so let's proceed with the uh, management part of this now we know that pcos is often associated with many conditions like obesity which is very common although in india we do have lean pcos which is again common but uh, many of the patients of pcos they have uh, they are either overweight or obese so body mass index helps us a lot in uh, analyzing these patients then eclampsia and preeclampsia has got a strong association with pcos so a pcos patient becoming pregnant is at a higher risk of getting eclampsia or preeclampsia during the pregnancy and that is why blood pressure monitoring is very important in such patients hypothyroidism again is very common so tsh must be done at the baseline itself and we also know that uh, during pregnancy there are chances of retinopathy worsening or nephropathy worsening so fundus examination or fundus photography along with serum creatine and ucr should be done at the first visit and if normal then maybe again we can repeat it uh, between 24 to 26 weeks of pregnancy uh, in terms of medication in case the patient is taking any anti hypertensives like ace inhibitors or arbs then we have to stop those during the pregnancy if the patient is on statins we have to withdraw statins as well also the patient being pregnant we have to start her on folic acid and potassium iodide and if a patient is at a higher risk of preeclampsia or eclampsia then the eda guidelines recommend that we should start the patient on low dose aspirin now the most important component of managing these patients is the glycemic monitoring so we have to explain the patients to prepare a sugar chart at home i usually give a printed chart like this which is which is in hindi because most of my patients speak hindi and in this chart uh, they have to mention the dates and the blood sugar levels whether they are done at pre meals or post meals or at bedtime or fasting and then we have the targets for fasting and post prandial sugar levels as per the ada so fasting sugar should be maintained below 95 and one hour post prandial below 140 two hour post prandial below 120 these are the standard guidelines for managing any gdm patient so these have to be explained to the patient uh, cgm is now being used in pregnancy and even ada recommends that the use of cgm helps a lot in achieving the a1c control so if the patient can afford and if you are sure that the patient is literate enough to 
uh, you know titrate her doses uh, based on the cgm values or cgm charts this can be very useful tool uh, for the patient for glucose monitoring now in terms of management of hyperglycemia we have three options the first one being the lifestyle modification which includes the medical nutrition therapy and physical exercise second is the oral anti diabetic drugs so among them uh, we know that now um, uh, the sulfonylureas we don't use um, although some patient uh, some people are using it off label but it is not anyways recommended metformin is something which is controversial and there is lot of controversy regarding metformin some people advocate use of metformin specifically in patients who are pcos patients and be becoming gdm while some bodies do not endorse it insulin always remains the drug of choice so what are the guidelines of ada ada says that lifestyle behavior change is an essential component of management of gdm and may suffice for the treatment of many of the women insulin should be added if if needed to achieve glycemic targets uh, it doesn't mention anything about the ohs Insulin is the preferred medication for treating hyperglycemia in GDM, and metformin and glyburide should not be used as first line agents, as both cross placenta and might be harmful for the patient or the, the fetus. Now, uh, if we start with lifestyle modification, uh, it is very important, and uh, we need to have an individualized diet plan for each patient. So, for this, we should take the help of a qualified RD or a nutritionist who is expert uh, in managing such patients of GDM. <laughs> the ADA guidelines recommend that there should be adequate nutrition intake uh, to promote fetal and maternal well-being, along with achievement of glycemic goals and promote weight gain. The minimum recommendation for carbohydrates is 175 grams, 75 grams of proteins, and 28 grams of fibers. Mufa and pufa uh, should be used, but uh, saturated fat should be limited, and trans fat, trans fat should be completely avoided. In terms of exercise or physical um, exercise. Uh, the patient should be advised to go for both aerobic or resistance exercise or both of them with moderate intensity and we must uh, take the uh, obstetrician on board before advising any physical exercise in case the patient has got some other complications the exercise might have to be limited uh, ideally we should recommend the patient to go for 20 to 20, 20 to 50 minutes of exercise at least 2 to 7 days per week now insulin is the drug of choice as i earlier said and in the insulin most of the patients will require a basal bolus therapy because that is the uh, one that you can easily titrate based on the uh, fasting and post meal values a, a self monitoring of blood glucose is very important and is a useful tool for titrating the doses of insulin and if you educate the patient properly regarding the titration methodology most of the patients can self titrate the dose of insulin and manage it very well now coming back to the controversial topic i kept it for the last metformin so uh, there have been so many studies so many meta analyses this was a study which was published in 2006 when uh, i was a student here and uh, it showed that metformin reduces the risk of abortion in pregnant women with polycystic ovarian syndrome so at that time uh, there, uh, it was very strongly recommended that the patients who are pcos and who become pregnant they should continue the use of insulin uh, continue the use of metformin because uh, that has uh, been shown to be very beneficial in uh, reducing the risk of abortions then uh, there have been uh, several other studies i'm just putting a few of those so in this study which was published in lancet they concluded that in pregnant women with pcos metformin treatment from the late first trimester until delivery might reduce the risk of late miscarriages and preterm birth but it does not prevent gestational diabetes and this another study uh, which is uh, again looking at the effect of metformin on pregnancy outcomes and this is a meta analysis so this concludes that metformin treatment in women with pcos throughout pregnancy could increase the possibility of term delivery full term delivery vaginal delivery and reduce the risk of early pregnancy loss preterm labor pregnancy complications such as gdm pih with no serious side effects moreover metformin was not teratogenic based on the limited data so the authors recommend that metformin treatment for women with pcos during the whole pregnancy uh, should be Uh, advice to uh, the patients for the betterment of mother as well as the baby so this was a meta analysis and uh, they found that metformin has been useful in various aspects this is another meta analysis which is looking at the uh, utility of metformin in preventing gdm so this meta analysis concluded that if pcos patients continue to take metformin the risk of gdm reduces significantly now Uh, based on uh, so many studies which have shown so many beneficial aspects of metformin the government of uk uh, endorses metformin to be used during pregnancies uh, pregnancy 
the um, this is from the official website of government of uk and they say that the national guidelines in the uk already recommend metformin for use in diabetes during pregnancy and gdm if a healthcare professional feels it appropriate so irrespective of whether the patient has pcos or not the, the uk government authorities recommend the use of metformin in patients with gdm or diabetes in pregnancy and uh, there are uh, so many studies as i said earlier but if you want a you know glimpse of uh, all the studies or the available uh, information regarding the use of metformin in pregnancy this is a very beautiful uh, review article written by dr gagan priya and sanjay kandra sir and uh, in this you will find a reference to uh, n number of studies and meta analysis on the use of metformin the beneficial aspects as, as well as the harmful aspects so i'll hardly um, recommend highly recommend this uh, that we should go through this particular review article now what does the ada say so ada uh, has uh, said that a meta analysis of 11 rcts demonstrated that metformin treatment in pregnancy does not reduce the risk of gdm in high risk women with obesity pcos or pre existing insulin resistance syndrome uh, so the current ada guidelines say that there is no use of metformin if you want to prevent gdm uh, the second point randomized double blind controlled trials comparing metformin with other therapies for ovulation induction in women with pcos have not demonstrated any benefits in preventing spontaneous abortions or gdm and there is no evidence base uh, to continue metformin uh, in such patients so again they are highly against use of metformin and they also mention about two rcts in which the babies who were born to the females who were given metformin during pregnancy were followed for 4 years and these found that the patient uh, the babies of uh, born to the mothers who received metformin had a higher bmi and increased risk of obesity during their childhood another follow up study of uh, follow up of around 5 to 10 years again showed that the offsprings who were born to such mothers had a higher bmi waist to height ratio and waist circumference and a borderline increase in the fat mass and that is why ada does not recommend the use of metformin in such patients so coming back to our case now what would you do or what what should i do so in my personal opinion though it's a controversial topic uh, many of my gynecologist friends would like to continue metformin many of my colleagues also might prefer to use metformin because there is such a compelling data uh, suggesting that metformin is useful in terms of maternal as well as fetal uh, benefits but i would personally go for um, a lifestyle modification in this patient um, mnt by uh, some registered uh, dietitian physical exercise i will discontinue metformin in this patient uh, the patient has already crossed the first trimester will start her on folic acid potassium iodide and low dose aspirin because the patient might be at risk of preeclampsia screen her for retinopathy and nephropathy and also i will advise her to go, do the home monitoring of blood pressure because the patient might develop hypertension or preeclampsia uh, during the pregnancy self monitoring of blood glucose and cgm i will offer to the patient and i will put the patient on basal bolus insulin therapy so i think that was my last slide uh, i thank you all again and i in my presentation here uh, i will have to uh, leave soon because i have another talk in some other conference so maybe uh, for the discussion you already have the other speakers here uh, and you all can discuss it